Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about my current sketching palette and the changes I've made to it. Every few months I do a few tweaks to my field sketching palette and roughly every year or so I do an update on my blog about it and I thought it might be fun to take a look at my current palette and what I've changed lately. This is my current palette. I will leave a link to all of the colors, all of the pigments on the blog. So there will be a detailed description and all of the names and the pigment numbers for these. And I will, I think I will talk about a few of them. About the paints themselves, I mainly use and have used in recent years a mix of Schmincke and Winsor and Newton colors. And recently I've noticed a few problems with my tubes, um, with my stored tubes from Schmincke. So uh, I use these big tubes, these 15 milliliters, and it might just be the batch, but in some of the tubes the binder tends to separate a lot. So when you open them, then a lot of this yellow binder, this goo-like uh, stuff comes out of it before the paint itself comes out. And this actually annoyed me that much that I switched to Winsor & Newton for restocking my paints. And I also like to give my tubes this sort of light massage before I refill my pens. So um, this sort of distributes the ingredients again a little bit. But I have to say, um, I don't know if it's how I store the paints. I try to keep them in a dark, cool place. I use these sort of jars and then also plastic containers and this is to store the tubes in an airtight way and also store them in the dark and in a fairly cool place. So theoretically it should be okay but well who knows what's going on with the chemistry inside those tubes here. I've never had the same problem with my Winsor & Newton paints so I I simply don't know what's going on on a chemical level. <laughs> so I like the quality of both paint brands generally and the price range is also the same for me. I use honey free watercolor exclusively because I go field sketching and I noticed how honey based paints uh, tended to be stickier, a bit more runny, they didn't dry as well in pens. So I have used mostly paint brands that don't have honey in them and that has always worked well for me. So let's talk about the paints themselves. I have introduced a few new colors to my palette that since last summer and I've removed a few. So I have added dioxazine violet back in. I used to have this in the palette um, in the year before and I really like it for mixing. So I also prefer it to cobalt or ultramarine violet because it doesn't granulate and I really prefer smooth washes for my work. Um, yeah, it's really powerful, it's really staining and you only need to pick up a little bit uh, in your palette. I've also added these two new blues here. So um, I like how flexible this makes me when I'm mixing greens, also for different sky colors. So I should probably show you what these colors actually look like. Um, this is a color swatch that I have here. So maybe I will just put it like this. So this is the manganese blue. And this is the Indian throne blue. So very light and a very dark blue to accompany these three classic blues that I already have here, which are ultramarine, cerulean and cobalt blue. So I have five blues now in my palette. That's quite a lot. I also really just love manganese blue. And this is really what the pigment is called is manganese blue hue. So they don't sell the original manganese blue pigment anymore. And this is just made from the same pigment as Taylor blue. Um, but it's really lovely. I mean, look at it. It's, it's really just, it makes me happy when I see it. <laughs> this clear azure blue color, almost a bit too intense for the skies that I have here in Germany. But I really, when I use it, I'm instantly taken to Southern Europe <laughs> and it just makes me happy. And it's not non-granulating as well. So this is really lovely for mixing, for light cool greens. Then um, about the Indian Throne Blue, this is a really great dark warm blue. Uh, it's very dramatic and very intense. And this is a pigment that's new for me. I've never done a lot of 
mixing or painting with it but I really again I really love the color and um, it's also amazing for darker and richer skies. Then let's take a look at the yellow. So I've removed the buff titanium that I had and have added this color called Jaune Brillant Dark. And this is uh, similar to a Naples yellow, but lighter and a bit creamier. So it's I use it for skies, for cream colored flowers, and also for th those yellowish areas on birds. So birds, bellies, and breasts. And I find that this um, color, this jaune brillant, <laughs> performs much better. So this is a French term. I'm, I'm very sure I'm butchering it. This is just, I think it translates as brilliant yellow. It's actually more of a pastel yellow. Um, yeah, but for me, it has a much better performance. It's yellower and brighter than the buff titanium I used before. And also the buff titanium produced slightly more muddy mixes for me. It, it's granulating pigment and yeah you already know I try to have mostly smooth non-granulating pigments in my palette. Yeah and for when I have to paint bird feathers that are a bit more neutral than this I can mix it with raw umber or any other earth tone. So I can easily change this into a more neutral creamy light color. And of course none of this is really absolutely necessary when you have white in the palette. I still have this titanium white here but it's a nice shortcut and I actually also love um, to use this for uh, architecture. We have a lot of this light cream yellow tone on buildings here and it's really a nice shortcut for this. And then I've removed two violets that were in my palette previously. So uh, in the last summer I had uh, Crinacridone Violet and Cobalt Violet and they were very nice additions when I sketched lots of flowers and especially bright pink orchids. Um, you might remember this from last year. I also did a few videos about it but I found I can really work better with only the Crinacridone Magenta with the Dioxazin Violet and this is just all I need with the, um, the rest of the red and the blue pigments. So these are the main changes that I've had in my palette. And another interesting change to my palette is that I've also switched the tin. So I've kept this small folding metal palette model because I find it's really optimal for me. I absolutely love it for field sketching. I love it in the studio and for demonstrations and um, I like having these three lids which means I have more space for mixing for different colors and uh, what has changed is that I've gone from a model by Schminke to a no-name palette. So this here is the no-name palette. It has absolutely the same layout and mixing areas. It costs a third of the price of the Schminke palette and it's also very well made. So I think this will hold for a few years at least. And what's different in this palette here is that these metal edges uh, on, on this lid here aren't as sharp as on the previous model by Schminke. I can show you because I have the old Schminke palette here. It's also really sturdy, really well made, high production quality. What I didn't end up liking as much were these sharp edges here. So I accidentally smashed my hand into these sharp edges a few times on this one and I don't believe it will cut off your finger <laughs> but I'm clumsy and it's just really painful and also the paint kept dripping off when I had mixed a lot of paint and it would just go off this edge. And um, yeah this other palette here means that the paint is contained a bit better in this lower part of the palette and it can't run off and it's also it, it just feels safer it just feels better to use and another reason why I find this no-name model here a bit nicer is that um, on the Schminke palette you of course have this Schminke logo and I like about this other one here that I don't run around like a brand ambassador for Schminke because this logo is showing everywhere when I make tutorials, when I show my palette, when I film videos, when I present the palette in my classes. And I'm, I'm not a brand ambassador for them. I like to use their products. They have great customer service. I also like buying local supplies. I, you know, they're a German company. But I dislike showing brand logos all the time when I film plus. And I don't think 
they need any more free marketing. They're already pretty good at advertising and selling their products, so they don't need me to add to the advertising of their brand name. Yeah, so that's basically all about my new palette, all of the changes that I made. Right now I'm really into this mix of cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Yeah, let's just mix this here. I've used this a lot in um, when I was filming for my upcoming class. Um, I'm actually redoing one of my older classes on how to paint clouds and skies. So I mixed a lot of grays for that class, for clouds and for gray skies, for cloud shadows, and I really fell in love with this mix. This is a really lovely middle gray. And of course, if you had more blue to it, then So you can really do nice clouds with this one and also dilute it and then it will have a very subtle amount of granulation which is um, as much as I can tolerate really. <laughs> um, I don't know why I don't really like, well I like granulation but um, not in my paintings I think. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is really the mix that I'm most excited about right now. Yeah, and if you like, let me know in the comments what your current favorite mix is. What pigments do you love? On the blog that accompanies this video, I will leave more links for pigment notes, further reading. All of my previous palettes are on the blog and I will leave links for that. So you can go through this list and see what changes I have made in recent years and how I ended up with this palette in the first place. And as I said, I will also add detailed pigment information. Yeah, and as always, I appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, then definitely subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to support my work, you can do so through Patreon or through Gumroad and this will allow me to create more pieces like this. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!